Good afternoon, everyone. It is 4.40 on the East Coast. It is Friday afternoon. It is time for Elite Extreme Women's EXW Friday Fights. I am Susie the Elf, and... I am your hostess. Welcome to my show. All right, I am going to get this shared out. And I hope y'all share it out too. Hope y'all are having a great Friday afternoon. I've had a little bit of a headache of a Friday afternoon, but that's all behind me now. Yeah, ever since I got my new computer back, I have not been able to log into my Office 365. So I could get to my um, all of my files that are on the uh, um, the cloud, which is like almost all of my office files. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Now almost all of my office files are on the cloud. Now I could log on to it on the website, but I couldn't do it on the apps. So for days I have been working with Microsoft trying to get the solution get it get this thing solved. Today I finally we finally got it fixed. I am so happy. Whew, you don't have no you have no clue how happy I am. But yeah, that is thankfully, that problem has been solved, thankfully. So, always feels good when you get a big problem solved. So. Let's wait while we get some people to filter on in here. Clinton, welcome to the show. Sorry you aren't feeling well.
I'm just working on getting match cards uh, set. Hey, Tito, thanks. I appreciate that. I'm sorry, I am looking for something that I thought I had done, but I guess I don't, which really surprises me that I didn't get it done, so I need to make sure it's not over. I'm, I'm looking at my match cards. And I've got some surprising ones that I don't have done, and I'm just wondering if I did them in, they're in the other. One of them I, I, is a new person. other one is a returning person and I'm shocked I don't have her card done. And I don't. Bubsy! Are you ready for the grand production tomorrow? Uh oh. Oh, I thought that was tom I thought the party was tomorrow, but it's next week. Okay. Um, Bubs, don't use my video. I'm going to record a better one. So, hold off on my video. I need to record a better one.
Yo, yo, yo! It's Blazed Radio! It's our boy, Blaze McCoy! All right. I'm about as organized as a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. <laughs> ay ay ay. I am I am not with it today, folks. Not with it at all. And you're going to have to excuse me. I have to have a an acid. I did this to myself. It's not a random flare-up. Um, I ate spaghetti last night. And I knew better. But I said, oh well. I'll just eat antacids to counteract it. Because I wanted spaghetti. And it was good too. I hadn't had spaghetti in so stinking long. It's just sad. So, all right. As I said, I did this to myself. I wanted spaghetti. I ate spaghetti over spaghetti squash. Mmm, good stuff. If you never tried spaghetti squash, I recommend you do so. Mmm, get some good stuff. All right, let's get this show going, folks. If you have trouble with your blood sugar, try spaghetti squash. Take out that take out the the carbs and try spaghetti squash. It's good stuff. You can cook it in an Instapot. You can cook it in a the microwave. You can cook. I, I prefer it in the Instapot because you cut it open and scoop out the seeds before you cook it in the microwave. You cook it whole. So yeah, I love it in the. I love it cooked in the Instapot. You can cook it in an air fryer, but it gets dark unlike in the um, Instapot which steams it so yeah I prefer the Instapot all right here we go let's go over our um, Tito spaghetti squash on its own is bland You've got to either, if you're going to eat just the squash, you have to season it. So, um, it, it's, it needs a vehicle. It needs something else to flavor it. Um, that, that's why you need the, the spaghetti sauce or you need, uh, some sort of something to go with it. Um. Uh, but by itself, it's bland. So you either need to season it up if you're going to eat it by itself, or you're going to need some sort of a sauce with it. Just giving you that that word of warning. Don't expect the squash itself to be oh so flavorful. It isn't. All right, here we go. Here's our show. In a no holds barred match we've got queen of evil versus rain and entrances are on our second matchup we've got a triple threat poison ivy pine taking mad 
taking on Mad Dog Molly Shamrock and Missy Harris. Entrances are on, and that is a triple threat, no holds barred match. Hey, it's my nephew, Big Fly Eli. Hey, P mm, excuse me, PPF Gamer. Glad you're here. Thank you for the like and the share. All right, then we got tag team action. This is a normal EXW tag team match. No disqualifications. And I got the hiccups. Excuse me. No rope breaks. None of none of that. No count outs. Okay. We've got the fabulous twins escorted to the ring by their cousin, Crusher Valentine. And we've got the family. We've got Bub's Hellcat and her daughter, Georgia Firecracker. And they are escorted to the ring by Bub's twin sister, Jerrica Page. And like I said, this is just a normal EXW tag team matchup. And entrances are on. Entrances are on. We just got to double check and make sure. We've got newcomer, Jennifer Vindem Vindem Vinderberg. In a submissions match with Jerrica Page. Then we got entrances on. Another in another newcomer, Alicia. Ba. I have I I'm probably butchering that name. Constantine taking on Bad Jan in a Hell in a Cell match. Then we've got our number one contenders match. We've got Crusher Valentine taking on Never Ending Legs in a two out of three falls Hell in a Cell match. Pin, submission, whatever it is, whichever it is, doesn't matter. Two out of three falls. All right, and then in our title matchup, we've got a snap, nap or tap match. We've got Cherokee Hawk taking on our champion, Lily Rage. Will she be able to defend her belt in her first title defense after the pay-per-view? She was able to retain. Was it, did she retain? Um, hold on. Got to look at something here real quick. Got to go look at my pay-per-view matches. No, Lily beat Mad Dog Molly Shamrock. So this will be her first title defense. Hey, Rose. Welcome to the show. Glad you could be here. All right. This will be Lily's first title defense. Period. She won the title at the pay-per-view, and now she is defending it for her first time since the ti since winning the title. All right. Um, Rose, war is not here. Zerk is war. Clinton Warped Productions is Clinton Cage. All right, got to do some blanket reconfiguration here. Uh, a little warm. <laughs> and now five minutes, I'll be cold. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Rose, uh, Zerk is war. Clinton is Clinton Cage. AEW Tito Network is just Tito. Big Fly Eli is Eli. Uh, that's his name. Big Fly Eli is who he says he is. And then we got PPF Gamer. So, yeah. All right. Let's get her started.
que me Hailing from Kansas City, Kansas. She stands at 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighs in at 152 pounds. She is the niece of Bad Jan. She is the Queen of Evil, Pam Rogers. And her opponent, she hails from Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. She stands at six feet, two inches tall, weighs in at 241 pounds. She, uh, 241 pounds, yeah. Her goal is to destroy anyone and everyone. She is rain. And there's the bell, folks. We are a go. Okay, Houston, we have liftoff. The show has officially started and I've already lost a binder clip folks can you believe it yeah I'm sure you can it's me <laughs> where's my binder clip I usually yeah great going good job lose the binder clip on the first stupid match. No, no, the matches aren't stupid. It's just me ranting at myself. <sighs> Dag gum it. Oh, no, I didn't lose the binder clip. It was on a, another set of cards. <sighs> I'm losing it. I, I Not been the best of weeks for me. Well, PPF, I... Elfie has a daughter and an adopted son. They're doing fine. The manager just has one daughter, and she is doing great. So it just depends on which way you're talking. <laughs> In character or out of character. <laughs> All right, rain. Uh-oh, she's tuning up. Here we go. Claymore, and she misses. QOE stepped out of the way, but she didn't miss there. Oh, the peppers. The peppers are good. Eifer was up on my lap just a few minutes ago, but he got down. I don't know. 
I don't know if he went to lay down in the sunshine or I don't know where he went or if he's looking out the window. He could be looking out the window. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, the fur babies, they're good. One. Oh, a one count there for rain. It's a pretty nice day here. We're we're overcast, but you know that can make for some nice weather too. I don't mind cloudy days. Drops the temperature down. Yeah, sunny with a nice breeze is good. Now, PPF, you being from Texas, you can appreciate this. You know how breezy it gets in Texas. Uh, going for pin, one. Only a one count there for QOE. Y you know how the wind blows in Texas, especially West Texas. You know, and it blows every day. I mean, if the wind isn't blowing, something's wrong. All right, going for a pin, two, only a two count. So, and by the wind blowing here, folks, I'm talking out in West Texas, eastern New Mexico. We're talking, oh, the wind normally blows about 30 to 40 miles an hour daily, even in Oklahoma. That's on a daily basis. So move up here to Wisconsin and going for a pin and only gets a one count there by QOE. And so one Wednesday night at church, the manager's hubs, manager's husband is getting ready to go out to the car. Uh, going for a pin. Uh, QOE gets a two count. They're on rain. Oh, she's getting frustrated there. And as he's getting out for church, you know, he, he brought a jacket just in case it got, it got chilly. And so as he's getting ready to leave, one of the elders of the church says to him, Oh, the wind's starting to blow out there. You might want to put your jacket on. I could not help help it. Oh, rain going for a pin. Two. And only a two count. And now she's fussing at the ref about his slow count. What she perceives as his slow count. And I can't help it. I just lose it. I start laughing. And, and he's going, what's so funny? And I look at him and I said, that's not wind. That's a slight breeze. It's blowing 10 miles an hour outside. They think 10 mile an hour wind is really windy. And, I'm, and we're sitting there going, that's a slight breeze. And, and honestly... The wind really doesn't blow unless it's a storm. The wind doesn't blow much more than about 10 miles an hour. So, yeah, PPF. <laughs> That's a bad wind up here to them is 10 miles an hour. I thought you would appreciate that story. Oh, here we go. The turnbuckle slam by rain. So when you said nice breeze, that reminded me of that story, and I had to tell you that. Yeah, I don't give 10 miles an hour a second thought. I mean, I wouldn't even wear a jacket in 10 mile an hour wind. Unless it's, you know, like negative 50. <laughs> And then I'm going to be wearing a down coat. <laughs> but, but yeah, 10 miles an hour, that doesn't even register. 
two count there again for Rain. Exactly, <laughs> you know, short sleeves, shorts, flip flops. Another two count there for Rain. She's she's getting frustrated with that rev. She needs to focus. All right, what's she gonna do now? Oh, slams QOE's face into the mat. Yeah, I mean, I think I've blown on somebody harder than 10 miles an hour. <laughs> I try not to make fun of people when they say, they say that 10 miles an hour is a, a, a strong wind. I, I try not to laugh about it. Sometimes I just can't help it. Going for a pin. One. Two, three, and Queen of Evil gets the pin with the power bomb to on. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, on Rain. My yeah, my leaf blower is stronger than that. Uh, I actually have to use a leaf blower because uh, the wind doesn't blow my leaves into the neighbor's yard here. <laughs> Back in Oklahoma, I never had to worry about a leaf blower because it would bl the wind would blow all the leaves away. And I didn't have to worry about it. All right, here we go, heading on to match two, our triple threat match. All right, this match in the center, we have Poison Ivy Pine taking on Mad Dog Molly Shamrock on the left and Missy Harris on the right. Now, I will say they do get some nice thunderstorms. They don't last long up here, but they do get some nice thunderstorms. Um, we've had to medicate the dogs for them they hate they hate thunderstorms but um but yeah they don't get them very often and, and they get baby tornadoes i, I say baby uh, they wouldn't know a tornado what a real tornado is <laughs> like i've seen all right, PPF says Ivy for the win. And right after they we moved up here, they were set, talking about these tornadoes that hit not too long before we got up here. And I went back and looked at the footage of those tornadoes, and I'm like, that's a, like a, a EF zero. <laughs> I don't even know if you would call them an EF zero. That was like a, a zero, you know. <laughs> 
All right, hailing from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. She stands at 5 feet 3 inches tall, weighs in at 122 pounds. She's a former recording artist that got into wrestling after beating up her manager and getting blackballed from the recording industry. Her moves are named her moves are named after recording industry names. She is a member of the Blackhearts. She is Poison Ivy Pine. And her first opponent hails from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. She stands at six feet tall, weighs in at 135 pounds. She is the daughter of the psycho sicko, Sean Shamrock. She is the mad dog, Molly Shamrock. And their final competitor, hailing from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. We've got the Battle of Canada going on at this match. She is six feet tall, weighs in at 132 pounds. She is the daughter of Wrestling Mama, niece of Mordred Nightwalker, cousin of Katie Chance and Angelina Nightwalker, Aaron Lynn and Emily Ray and Cassie Madam Red. I think I got everybody in there. She is Missy Harris. Boy, rattling off the Nightwalker family is tough. Oh, I should just say she's part of the Nightwalker clan. Figure it out yourselves. to make my job a lot easier. All right, they're a member of the Nightwalker clan. Figure it out. I don't know, but when people need to figure out the Nightwalker clan, they seem to come ask me. Like, I'm supposed to have it all figured out? No, go ask Mordren. He knows them all. He should. Most of them belong to him. 25 and counting. Yes, Missy, just on her Uncle Mordren's side, she has 25 cousins. And I always say, and counting, because you never know when one's going to crawl out of the woodwork. I know he's done producing. <laughs> snip, snip. But I always say there could be more coming out of the woodwork. All right. Right now, Molly is in charge of Missy. Ivy's down on the floor at ringside right there in front of us. All right, Ivy's back in the ring. Oh, she, looked like she got a chop block off on Missy, but I don't think so. I think she was going for it, but miss. But boy, she's not missing with those blows. And now, oh, a DDT off the ropes while Missy panders to the crowd, and she pays for it, too. Oh, goodness. That one, and yes, it wasn't enough. I'm afraid of that. Oh, everything's falling. It's all precariously balanced over here. Oh, yeah, you should see my 
area beside my my chair. It, it's it's <laughs> yeah. Sorry about this, folks. Having to dig out the antacids. A new bottle. I just finished the old one. And a two count there for Molly on uh, Ivy. Sorry, give me just a minute. Oh, Molly came in for a drop kick, but looks like she missed. But Missy didn't miss, or there. Going for the pin on Molly. One, two. That Now that's a great strategy in a, a multiple person match like this. You get, especially a three person, you get one person out at ringside and then you go for the pin on the one in the ring. Well, come on, Aper. Come here. There's my boy. See, right there, Ivy broke up the pin, taking out the referee. Hi, sweet boy. Ref is still down. Oh, discus clothesline there by Ivy. Rebel, there's my girl. How's my sweet girl doing? Now, nah, I just might as well adopt her. Uh, two count there for Ivy on... Um, Molly, I don't, oh, Missy's on the far side of the ring, another pin, and another two count for, um, Molly. Matt, I just might as well adopt Rebel right along with, um, Carmella. Make them mine, you know, they spend enough time with me. <laughs> Oh, what was that by Missy? Takes down two, three, and Missy here. Missy takes out Molly. She rolls to the ringside. Then she puts a pin on Ivy. Ivy getting the win. So Missy Harris. Missy Harris is your winner. Here we go with your replays. Does Rebel still have the blades from Shifty's show? I have a few referees she can practice on. Oh. 
Either that or she can come up here with me and practice with throwing knives. All right, we've got the team of the Fabulous Twins taking on two members of the faction, The Family, Bubs and her daughter, Georgia Firecracker. The twins are the twins are ex escorted to the ring by their cousin Crusher and Bubs and Cherokee are escorted to the ring by Bubs's twin sister Jerica and Ch Firecracker's aunt. PPF says the family for the win. I knew what you meant, PPF. <laughs> yes, sweet boy. You're moonbeaming me awful hard. Clinton says the family for the win. Because he knows that's Mama's faction. For those of you who have Netflix, I'm going to plug a show. I have plugged it a couple of times, but I'm going to plug it again. If you like superheroes, you like comic books, you like it a little gritty, check out Jupiter's Legacy. I, I've watched the whole series the whole first season it was really good I need to go back and re-watch it because I felt like I only caught half of what was going on so yeah really good series I, I thought that it was really good it was gritty um, it was not your typical it was not like a Marvel's type series not a typical superhero series um, like your Marvels, like your WandaVision or when your Winter Soldier, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. No, it's not like that. It was gritty. Gritty and dark. Hey, Jamar Games. Welcome to the show, my friend. Glad you could be here. By the way, if you haven't already done so, if you like what you see, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, Hit the subscribe and the bell for so you know when we go live. All right. I don't know why they don't have them coming out as a team. Hailing from Amarillo, Texas. She stands at 5 feet 9 inches tall. Weighs in at 110 pounds. She is the daughter of D-Train and Sweets T. Twin sister of Tiona. The sister of the Brothers of Mayhem, which is Big Fly Eli, and the modern-day warrior Ethan Moore. She is the niece of Susie the Elf, the, cr the cousin of Crusher Valentine, and Paul Utaker. She is in the tag team, the Fabulous Twins, and a two-time Friday Fights Warrioress Champion. She is Dakota Moore. All right. Hey, PPF. I appreciate it. Hope you uh, be careful going to the store and see you soon. And yes, I know you're cheering on Jennifer. Hailing from Amarillo, Texas. Amarillo by morning. Just up from San Antonio. She stands at 5 feet 9 inches tall and weighs in at 111 pounds. 
She is the daughter of D Train and Sweets T, sister of the twin sister of Dakota, and the brothers of Mayhem. They're not the twin sisters of them. She's the sister of the Brothers of Mayhem, Big Fly Eli, and the modern-day warrior Ethan Moore. She is my niece, the cousin of, Val of Crusher Valentine and Paul Utaker. She is a member of the tag team, the Fabulous Twins. And my, oh my, your nose is cold, Eifer. She is Tiona Moore. And there you go. There's the tag team, the Fabulous Twins. Hailing from Augusta, Georgia. She stands at 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighs in at 135 pounds. She is your Thursday Revolution GM. A proud member of the faction, the family. Mom of Georgia Firecracker and Cherokee Hawk. Twin sister of Jerrica Page. And aunt of Steffi. She's a deer hunting, bass fishing, moonshine, swigging, shotgun, toting, sassy Southern Belle. She is Bub's Hellcat. Hailing from Stone Mountain, Georgia. She stands at 5 feet 7 inches tall and weighs in at 124 pounds. She is the daughter of Bub's Hellcat, sister of Cherokee Hawk, niece of Jerrica Page, and cousin of Steffi. She's a proud member of the faction, the family, and an unrepentant giggler. She is Georgia Firecracker. Unrepentant giggler and butt wiggler. Did that bother you, me moving the computer? I'm so sorry. All right, PPF, move, watch out for her move, Black Magic, whichever one that one is. Oh, and your ears are cold, too. Your ears and your nose. Poor boy. All right, we start out with Dakota and Bubs. We've got Crusher at ringside and Jerrica at ringside. Oh, you don't want me to warm up your nose? Okay. I'll warm up your ears for you, though. You sweet boy. All right, color, sh shoulder collar lock up, but a clean break there. Now lock up again, back in the corner. Well, the, up here comes the ref calling for a break. Breaking them up. Clean break up yet again. Oh, vicious clothesline though. Bub's back up, but gets leapfrogged. Mm, got the hiccups. I'm sorry. If I hiccup in y'all, hiccup here, y'all. Tag two firecracker. Double team here. Big hit toss, a double team hip toss, then followed up with that double kick. Oh, belly to back release suplex by Bubs. Now she's stomping on Dakota. Oh, she's got her in a submission. No, this is a submission match. I've got to go look at my matches here. Uh, no, I believe that no, this is just a, a regular tag team match. Nothing, no special stipulations. Just no rope breaks, no DQs. Tagging in Tiona. Everybody has been in the match. Oh, uppercut there by Firecracker. Oh, nice tape, leg scissor tape down there by Firecracker. 
Oh, she gets caught and elbow right in the thigh. Oh, that may even made the referee step back. Oh, Jerrica's distracting Tiona, letting Firecracker recover, and she takes down Tiona. Tiona back up, comes back in the ring. Oh, I thought maybe Firecracker would tag, but she doesn't. Firecracker sent into the other ring. Oh, we've got tagged. Her is tagged in. Dakota is tagged in. Sends Firecracker into the corner and gets two knees. All right, Bubs tagged in. Gets caught there. Tiona on the attack. Oh, a chair slid into the ring. It is legal. There are no DQs. Jerrica sliding that, yeah, that chair into the ring. Dakota just looking at Bubs. Tiona taking down Bubs with that twisty neck breaker. Now she's just she's just looking at her. I guess she was waiting for her to sit up. If that was a mistake. That could cost her. Oh, and another twisty neck breaker. Oh, she's staying on her this time, but Bubs is back up to her feet quickly. And that belly to back release suplex. Well, really wasn't a release suplex. It was a belly to back suplex. Throws Tiona into the corner. Oh, and a tag to Firecracker. And here we go with that double team hip toss. Into the kick. All right, Tiona waiting on Bubs to get up, it looks like. She needs to stay on her. Where are you going, baby? Oh, kick to the face. And another now. Oh, she's going to put her in the figure four. And now bridging up into the war four. And she breaks free. Jerrica back up, working on the turnbuckle, distracting the referee. And we've got a tag. Here comes Tiona. Cartwheel slam by uh, by Firecracker into a pin. One, two, only a two count. Surprised Dakota didn't try to come break that up. Now, uh, Tiona on the offensive. Reversal. Sending Tiona over into the family's corner. Nice takedown. You could say this match is a family feud. Oh, big leg drop. Tag in to mom. 
Here comes Bubs. Sent into the corner. And now she's just staring at her. We've got high noon, folks. Now Tiona fighting back. Bubs on the attack here. A punt to the back. Broken bow. No joy for Tiona. Oh, Jerrica back up on the ringside working on that apron. This is going to distract the ref. And backstabber into the Tiona statement. Will Bubs tap? No, she does not into a pin. Here comes Dakota breaking it up. Jerrica and Tiona look like they're going to go at it, but they don't. Oh, electric chair drop by Dakota. Tiona is out on the floor. Or sorry, out on the mat. All right, they're at ringside. The ref, I don't know where he's going. Oh, big takedown. Crusher coming over. Bubs going for a pin. One, two, only a two count. Forearm there, kick, forearm, kick. Oh, she missed that kick, but didn't miss that backhand. Now Tiona fighting back. Oh, she hit the stairs there. Here comes here comes Firecracker. Oh, changes her mind. Bubs thrown down the ringside area. I do not remember this being a no-holds barred. Oh, it's the TA or an extreme rules even. I just got her in the Tiona statement. Will she tap this time? No joy. Tiona gave up. Oh, throws her into the parricane and punches her. All right, they're back into the ring. And Bubs is in charge here. Net breaker. Going for the pin. No, no count. The referee wasn't in the ring. Firecracker was going to go after um, Dakota, but there, since there was no count, she didn't have to. They both got out of the ring. Oh, Bubs, that big. Oh, she's got her in the Tiona statement. She's got her in her own submission, and she taps out, folks. Tiona taps out to her own submission. And the family is your winner of this tag match. But what a great tag battle this was.
there are your winners. The family. Yes, Matt, that sure was a great match. I will be right back. Sorry about that. Got a little warm. The sweatshirt had to come off. It gets cold up here in the mornings in my house. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I have put a sweatshirt on. And um, by about this time in the afternoon, it gets a little warm. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. We've got Yennefer uh, Vindenberg taking on... Jerrica Page in a submissions match. Our first competitor. Oh, it's too bad. PPF is going to miss her intro. Hailing from Asgard, she stands at five feet five inches tall, weighing in at 147 pounds. She is the Black Witch of Rev Revire. She is the girlfriend of Geralt, the White Wolf. She was born a half-elf and a half-witch. She is Yennefer Vindenberg. And her opponent, she hails from Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She stands at 5 feet 5 inches tall, weighs in at 132 pounds. She is the mom of Steffi, twin sister of Bub's Hellcat, aunt of Georgia Firecracker and Cherokee Hawk. She is a proud member of the faction, The Family. She is the fallen angel, Jerrica Page.
Oh, what a nice drop toe hold to start out with by Jerrica. A running knee right there by Yennefer. Oh, big uppercut by by Jerrica. She gets her up and drops her slingshot on the top rope. Oh, big kick to the back. Oh, she misses that stomp though. Yennefer was able to get up to her feet, but she got punched, and now a series of belly to back suplexes she's going for the third one and there it is oh and Yennefer thrown down onto the floor by Jerrica give me a drink here Page thrown into the ring, rolled over. Oh, twisting DDT off of the apron. All right, thrown back into the ring. Yennefer follows her in. All right, working that arm kind of at a hammer lock position. Now pulls that leg up for this. Now this is a submissions match. Oh, and Jerrica works her way out. That kick to the face, I'm sure, felt good to, to Paige. I've known her long enough. She likes kicking people in the face. Pagers and I go back a long way. Clinton says Paige for the win. Her daughter, Steffi, I have watched her grow up. This is like an, another niece of mine. She's got her in that straight jacket. That straight jacket hold. Will Jerrica submit? I can tell you this. Jerrica probably will not submit. I know her too well. It's way too early in the match. See, there she goes, breaking free. Oh, she's trying to roll her over. Oh, she gets her rolled over for the Boston Crab. Will she submit? No, she does not. But even though Jerrica likes kicking people in the face, her favorite thing is throwing knives into Mordron's boots. You know, that's what Mordron gets for divorcing her. Just saying. Yeah, pretty much any time Jerrica sees Mordron, she throws a knife in his boot, at least one. I don't I can't tell you how many pairs of boots she's ruined. Alright. A uh, sharpshooter there, but Jen Jennifer breaks free quickly. All right, here we go. Oh, two rolling butterfly suplexes, and then a s butterfly slam onto the mat. Now the trapezius claw was applied. I, I've got a feeling that Jerrica has shown an in, instant dislike to Yennefer. Well, I will say this. There's not many people Jerrica does like. <laughs> 
picky person about who she picks as her friends. And in her debut match, Yennefer taps out to Jerrica. Good match, though. Nice back and forth. Great match. There is your winner, folks, Jerrica Page. All right, we've got newcomer. I'm just going to call her Ellie. Because I know I will butcher her name. Um, Ellie Constantine taking on Bad Jan in a hell in a cell. Hello, Rex. Whatever, Rex. I'm not going to argue with you because that's what you want. So, just, hi, Rex. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a fabulous day. All right. I have I have no info on her yet. All I know is her name. I'm not I just wasn't quite prepared, folks. There's her name. I'm going to call her Ellie Constantine because I know I'm going to butcher her fra her name. All right, Rex, would you like catering to bring you any drinks or food? Make your, make your viewing pleasure more comfortable. You know, it says that back there on the, the banner, don't try this at home. Hold on just a second. Hailing from Kansas City, Missouri, standing at 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing in at 120 pounds. She is the aunt of Queen of Evil, Pam Rogers. She is bad. 
said, Jen, you know, it says that on the banner, don't try this at home. If they hadn't tried this at home, we never would have had Jeff and Matt Hardy. Just saying. <laughs> Don't forget, folks, if you haven't already done so and you are liking what you see tonight, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to the show, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications. That way you know when we go live here on Back to, back to Basics. <laughs> Elite Extreme Women. I almost said my radio channel. <laughs> um, by the way, folks, we're very, very close to hitting the 250th subscriber so please share this out that way we can get some new uh, people here to the show when we hit 250 that 250th subscriber will get a custom piece of artwork by the sadistic one frozen wretch also we're trying to hit a goal of 500 subscribers when we hit 500 subscribers, we will have a giveaway, and that will be either something from some things from the Red Bubble store, or I will make something. I'll, I'll knit something, hand knit something for you, for the winner, and also the winner of the giveaway will get a piece of custom artwork from the Sadistic One Frozen Rage. Just to see some of. To give you an idea of the quality of work you can get, all of the artwork done here at EXW is done by Rage's fiance. If that's what his fiance can do, just think about what you could get from Rage. His work is as good as hers. So, you know. Spread the word, folks. Hit that share button down there. There's a lot of different platforms that you can share this out on. So hit the share button and share it out if you would, please. All right. What a match so far. A lot of back and forth action. I've already been out around the cage and now they're back in the ring we've got a pin one two only a two count for ellie also if you haven't uh, contacted me on skype and you'd like to be a part of our skype group that's where you get the most information and storylining um, my contact information is right there. If it's not obvious who you are, say your contact name says George Smith, but your the name I see you by here in YouTube is Radio Rex. When you send me that contact request, say, hey, this is Radio Rex. Then that way I know that you're somebody I should take accept the contact request from. Just as an example, Rex, I know your name's not George Smith. Oh wow. I gotta look at that again, see what what Jan did. Jan shoulder blocks Ellie off of the apron into the 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 cage. Wow, that was impressive. Now both ladies are back into the ring. Rex, I was using you as an example. You're fine. You didn't do anything. All right, Jan working on the leg now of Ellie. Interesting outfit of Ellie there. Quite gesture esque looking. Oh, wow, did you see her flip over there? That was freaky. Going for a pin. Two. Only a two count.
So, Rex, are you having a good day today? Nice series there by Jan. Oh, big punch to the face. Takes Ellie down hard. And now a stomp to the gut right through the legs. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you're not having a good day. Oh, two count. I thought that was going to be a three count. Ellie slowly getting to her feet. Oh, she did it again. That flip over. That's freaky. Going for a pin. Threat slow to get down. One, two. And only that should have been a three count, folks. If the ref wasn't so freaking slow, he deserves to be fussed at. Rebel, there's your next target. Oh, here we go. Oh, right into the ropes. Look at that. Now, I mean, she has reason to celebrate that and say she's number one. That was impressive. Here she goes. She's going to monkey flip her now. Right into the ropes, too. Caught her legs on the ropes. Now going for a pin again. One, two, and a kick out. She didn't, cut, she didn't grab the legs. She did not secure the leg. I think she would have had a three count if she had secured the legs. All right, she's got her in a submission. Will she get a tap out? No, she's getting kneed to the head instead. Powerbomb into a pin. One, two. Oh, no, she got a two count. Rolls her over. Got her in the Boston Crab. Will Jan submit? No. Oh, she misses. She went high risk and she missed. Jan didn't miss. Lays her out flat on the mat. Going for a pin. One, two, three. And bad. Jan is your winner. But the ref really was not in the right position to see the shoulders. She could have gotten her shoulders up. And the ref wouldn't have known. But bad Jan, your winner of the fifth match. Now we're going to go to our first of our main event matches. Wow, we're doing good on time today, folks. Yeah, that was a good match, Clinton. Instead of saying GF, why don't you say GM for good for good match instead of fight? Way to go, Bad Jan. All right, now we have in our number one contenders match, Isis the Crusher Valentine. That's her, Isis Valentine is her real, in, her real name. Taking on never ending legs in a hell in a cell, uh, two out of three falls. Um, no, it's not submissions, it's not KOs, it's just two out of three falls.
I told you. <laughs> she likes to stabby stabby on my refs. She's girl after my own heart. I'm training her well. Hailing from Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Yeah, really, she's not from Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. But we won't go there. She stands at 6 feet tall, weighs in at 167 pounds. She is the daughter of Susie the Elf and Rick the Assassin Valentine. She is the wife of Paul Utaker, daughter-in-law of Mr. and Mrs. Utaker, niece of D-Train, but claimed by many uh, minis as their niece, cousin of the fabulous twins and the brothers of Mayhem, Harley Quinn and Winter Ann. She is a former Friday Frights warrioress. She is Isis the Crusher Valentine. Her opponent hails from Queens, New York. She stands at 6 feet 4 inches tall and weighs in at 224 pounds. She is the daughter and protege of Shifty the Drunken Dragon Clown. She is a former leather and lace champion. She is. She, uh, she's got legs and she knows how to use them. She is never ending legs. Legs for the win, says Tito. Oh, leg scissors with the elbow to the head by pressure. Going for a pin. One. Only a one count. Oh, nice drop there by Crusher. Jawbreaker reversal by Legs. Oh, nice counter by pressure it, that cross body into a ground and pound sends legs into the corner turns her around oh and the bulldog off of the ropes that springboard bulldog now she's going into a pin one two and only a two count. She's wearing down her opponent with these early pins. Sends legs into the corner. Now a su suplex. Oh, she went for a stop, but legs got up faster than she could get there for the stomp. Oh, but legs is sending hard into the corner. Rolls her over, goes for the pin. One. Only a one count. All right, the neck wrench there. Kiddo does that for me every day. All right, the one-legged boss, uh, the one-legged 
camel clutch. Or the half camel clutch, whatever you want to call it. Oh, big slam makes Crusher eat the mat. Oh, big scoop slam. Going for a pin. One, two, only a two count. Oh, styling and profiling. Let's pressure get up, but oh, she was taken down. Now, oh, interesting way to roll her up. One, two, and only a two count. You got to remember. Crusher is made of sterner stuff. She's half the elf, after all. People tend to forget that, that she's half elf. She does... Oh, here she goes. One, two, and a two count there. She does tend to look more like her dad than me, but, you know in some ways she doesn't have my ears in the way that counts the most she looks like her dad she has her dad's ears oh getting that big slam making ice uh, eight, making crusher eat the mat now going for a pin one two only two counts Going for a pin. One, two, three. And she gets the first pin. Legs gets the first pin. It's one to nothing. Backpack stunner there by legs. Crusher counters. Pandering to the crowd. I've warned her about that. It can cost her. Oh, nice series there. She misses there. And legs counters. Legs going high risk. And high reward with that leg drop. Oh, she's going for the pin. Oh, a dirty pin. And only a two count. All right, Crusher's going to go high risk this time. Will it be high reward? Yes. Oh, that hurt her a little bit, too. All right, that cross body and ground and pound there. Now working on the arm. Now going to go for the pin. One, two, only a two count. Crusher has got to get a pin to get, stay in this. DDT. Uppercut reversal. Hey, Cowboy John, welcome to the show. How you doing? Slam. All right, going for the pin. One, two. Oh, close. So close. She almost got the 
got the match in the bag right there. Oh, wonderful, John. Those, those things are annoying. I, I've had a pick line in. Getting it out annoying, too. That holding the pressure on there for 10 minutes. All right, power bomb into a pin. One, two. Th oh, dang, so close. Now into the Boston Crab. Will she get a submission? No, but man, she was so close on that three count. That third, that third count. I thought she had the pin there. Both of them catching their breath. Legs a little recovered a little faster. Well, John, I hope getting your pick line out was as easy as mine. They pulled it out, put the pressure on it. I had no blood coming from my pick line where where my pick line was inserted. I hope yours was as easy as that. Going for a pin. One, two, three. And the winner of this number one contenders match, two pins to none, is never ending legs. Great match, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you want to take it easy with that arm the next few days. My problem with my pick line is I kept clotting. And they uh, kept having to they kept having to um, clear it and that was what was annoying about mine is that it, it kept clotting and slowing things down because they were trying to my they were trying to do antibiotics for my meningitis and um, so I guess I clot real well <laughs> and yeah it, that was that was what was annoying about mine All right, now we are at our main event. We've got our title match. We've got Cherokee Hawk taking on Lily Rage in her first title defense. Now, it's not her first time to hold this title, but it is her first title defense since getting the title back.
Yeah, I'd take mouth meds over pick line meds any day. All right. Hailing from Stone Mountain, Georgia. She stands at 5 feet 10 inches tall. Weighs in at 170 pounds. She is the daughter of Bub's Hellcat. Sister of Georgia Firecracker. Niece of Jerrica Page. Cousin of Steffi. She is a proud member of the faction, the family. And she is also proud of her Native American heritage. She is Cherokee Hawk. Yeah, when I when I had meningitis, I went from pick line to no more meds. I didn't have to change to oral medication. Hailing from your darkest fears. She stands at five feet one inch tall. Weighs in at 135 pounds. She is the daughter of Marzana and Frozen Rage. Sister of Abbott Rage, niece of Jenna Rage. She is called her daddy's little angel and her mommy's little psychopath. She is one of our resident dancing queens and your current Friday Fights Warrioress Champion. She is Lily Rage. Uh, and the alarm ringeth, so it is timeth for my medicineth. And there's what it's all about, folks, the Friday Fights Warrior S title. Okay, up oh, there they are. <laughs> oh, excuse me, so sorry, folks. When I have acid reflux, I tend to, when my acid reflux is uh, bad, I tend to, to uh, pick up worse. All right, Lily in charge here. Her mama cheering her on. Sorry, I'm I'm popping in acids again. Just gotta love uber bad acid reflux. I knew this would happen from eating the the spaghetti.
I just hadn't had spaghetti in so long. It sounded so good. I just don't eat tomatoes. It is like my one of my major triggers, along with peppers, like, you know, chili peppers. Like, you know, hatch green chilies. My absolute favorite thing. Oh, buckle bomb there. Working on the arm. You know, this is a snap, nap, or tap match. Forgot to, to tell you that. Snap, nap, or tap. Oh, pounding her head into the mat. Belly to belly suplex there. Now she's going to put her in that half camel clutch. Oh, nice slam there by Cherokee. Oh, fighting back now. Punches to the ribs. Backbreaker. Oh, arm drag reversal. Just taking Lily over to the ropes. Oh, and slings her off of the ropes. Double arm drag, and then a missed drop kick off of the ropes. Lily sidestepped her. Oh, but a float over there by a Cherokee. And then the two clotheslines and the drop kick off the ropes. She nailed it that time. Oh, belly to belly suplex. Lily's hurting. She's but she's crawling to the ropes. Marzana gets up on the apron and distracts Cherokee, allows Lily to get up and recover. Lily grabs Cherokee and slams her to the mat. Mama doing a good job there, helping her daughter. Here we go with that half camel clutch. Suplex. Oh, and she did it. Lily defends her title, knocking out Cherokee. What a match. Mama, just in time for the end. <laughs> Glad you could make it, though. And I gave... God, we have plenty of time in between my show and your show. No overlap today. I started a little earlier. About I had started about five minutes earlier, actually. Oh, hey, it's no problem, Mama. 
I'm just glad you were able to make it for any of it. So, all right, let's go check out the news. But yet, yeah, there will be no over overlap this week. All right, there's no new news. Yeah, there's there's no back there there's no further back news because I deleted the show. I I actually created a new show by mistake and I had to rebuild this show. So everything started over including rankings and news and everything started over. So yeah. Yay me. I may do that with the other shows as well. And that way the rankings start over since everything has started over. Um, but it is what it is. Um, I got to talk to the GMs and see if that's what they want me to do. So that is our show for today. Um, if you didn't catch it live or got here at the end, I hope you go back and check out the replay. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, um, please subscribe and give us a, a ring the bell for notifications. That way you know when we go live. Um, please, those of you that are here live refresh the show and leave a comment i really do appreciate it when you do that if you're catching it on the replay please leave a comment that really does help out the the show get get noticed and um it helps it helps out my 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 shows can't get the words out today um please go and check out wrestling mama check out her channel she has a show coming up at 7 p.m. Eastern wrestling survivor awesome show she does she takes the show survivor and melds it with wrestling and puts out an awesome product uh, so check out rest the channel wrestling mama and the show wrestling survivor um, I don't Mama, are you still looking for people for season two? I'm waiting to hear from her. I'm waiting to hear from Mama if she's looking for, still looking for people for season two. Well, not season two, but next season. Hopefully, I, I'm not sure she's still looking for participants for next season. Um, check out her show coming up at 7 p.m. I'm sure she'll let us know if she still is or not. Um, but yeah, check out her show. It's great. Um, be sure to check out Cowboy John. He does still do some streaming now and then. Okay, yes, she still is looking for participants for next season. Um, Mama, would you give us your uh, Skype contact information? So if somebody here would like to join a, uh, contact you for that, you need to contact her on Skype uh, to get involved in next season's Survivor, if that sounds like something you, Wrestling Survivor, if that sounds like something you would be interested in. It is a lot of fun. I have never taken part in it. It's just not my thing. I love watching it. It's, uh, 
um, uncommitted one with a capital U and the letter one at the end of uncommitted is her Skype contact. So contact mama, tell her who you are. Like I was watching EXW, I'm interested in Survivor. You know, be sure to tell her so that she knows why you're contacting her, okay? That way she knows to accept your contact. Just like with me, if I'm not, if it's not obvious who you are, tell me who you are. So uh, get in touch with Mama if you're interested in Wrestling Survivor. It's a lot of fun over there. Like I said, it's not my thing to participate in. I just love watching it because it it's a hoot. Um, a lot of fun over there. So um, check out check out that. Uh, if you see somebody's name in the 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 that's chatting and you're not subscribed to their channel, go subscribe. We like to do subscribe for subscribe here. Subscribe to each other's channels. Uh, help each other grow your cha grow their channels. Um, be nice. Just do something nice for somebody. With that, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, oh, one other piece of news for, for, for EXW. Tomorrow, after Blazed Radio, the premiere of Murderous Matchup. This, this show is GM'd by Shulky and Zerk. Basically, it's a free-for-all show. Anybody on the roster is free game for Zerk and Shulky to play with. You never know what you're going to get at Murderous Matchup. So, you got to tune in and find out what's going on in those two's mind and what they've come up with each week. There's going to be storyline arcs, and they're not just going to be like one or two show arcs. No, they're going to be long storyline arcs. They've got a lot planned, planned out. I will tell you this, the first ten shows have already been planned. You don't want to miss a thing. You don't want to miss a single show of the first 10 shows. I don't care if you watch it live or not. You don't want to miss a show of the first 10 shows. You miss a show and you don't go back and catch it before the next show. You're going to miss something that's important. So, murderous matchup starts tomorrow after Blazed Radio about 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern. But it is worth the watch. Watch it live. Watch it replay. I don't care. It's worth it. So don't miss out on Murderous Matchup. All right. Now, tomorrow... We start out at noon Eastern with HWA Bloodlust West with Mama and Hugo. Then we go to Blazed Radio. I think he's also planning on a, bla uh, a Get Blazed Talk radio before his show. I think. I'm not 100% sure. But, ch but be on the lookout. That will be right after Hugo and Mama's show. And then his... Then Blazed Radio will follow immediately after Get Blazed. So 6 and 7, I believe, is what time... Uh, 6 for the talk show, 7 for the... For... Um, blazed Radio. And then I follow the nearest half hour, which would be about 10 o'clock, or uh, 11 o'clock Eastern, for Murderous Matchup. So... Lots and lots and lots going on tomorrow. So don't miss out on any of the action. So see you at Mama Show. And then uh, Goddess of Pain will be back with Whippy Post Wrestling tonight. Uh, about 
10 o'clock Eastern, 9.30 Eastern. So you don't want to miss out on any of that action. It's ladies' night. We just kicked it off right here with the XW Elite Extreme Women. All right. Remember, folks, mask up if you're not vaccinated. And I mean fully vaccinated two weeks after your second vaccine. Mask up. Social distance. Wash your hands. Use your hand sanitizers or whatever. That's just, you know, wash your hands, folks. That's just common sense. Use your common sense, folks. Do all those things. Check with your doctor about vaccinating. You know, just like, you know, can you get the vaccine? Is there anything in it that you can't have? Like, are you allergic to anything inside the vaccine? Check that stuff out. But get your vaccine, folks. And if there's an opportunity to do some good out there, do it. No matter how big or small, public or private, whatever you feel comfortable with, folks. If you've got an opportunity to do that good, please do so. You never know what your good deed will spark. It may spark a, a fire of good deeds and change your community. You never know. It could. But if you've got the opportunity, do it. I mean, even as something as simple as taking a shopping cart back into the store at Walmart or your grocery store or whatever you never know that little thing may spark a, a, a good chain a good deed revolution you never know so with that have a great night see you wrestling survivor and back here tomorrow about 11 p.m. either 10 p 10 30 or 11 p.m eastern for murderous matchup see you then have a great night folks <laughs>